All right, today's gonna be a very short video. It's mainly for people that are just looking for things on YouTube and they need to find the solution for this problem. Today I'm going to be putting on an OLPF sensor to my new Blackmagic Ursa Mini 4.6K G2, which is the worst name in the history of cameras, but a really good camera. With that being said, this filter comes from Raw Lights and they pretty much have everything you need right inside this little case. Just make sure you get the Pro and you tell them you want the Pro if this is a camera you have because it's slightly different for the original 4K or for the original 4.6K. Anyways, let's get to it. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is set this camera aside pull in the raw light case and put on the nice clean gloves they give you to put on. I believe they're one size fits most. I have big clod hopper hands and they seem to fit me just fine, so we will see. That way you don't get any dust or anything on your lens, even though the Ursa Mini Pro does have a piece of glass, whether it be an ND filter or just a clear piece of glass in between the sensor and the filter. Okay, so next thing you want to do is take out this little Allen wrench that they have supplied for you. Put the rest of the kit aside. We're going to pop off this lens protector and unscrew the EF mount that is installed on here real quick. But before I do that, let me get a magnetic part tray so we don't lose anything. And there you go. All right, the next thing we need to do is go into our little kit that we have over here to the right. And we are going to put in this 0.45 little shim that Rylite was nice enough to supply for us. Bam, perfect. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is put this safely to a side. Bring in the lens mount. I'm going to put the lens back cover back on so that way it has a little bit of protection. And I'm going to dismantle the lens mount itself with the included screwdriver they have supplied. They thought of everything for us. Okay, you slowly take the back off. Now that you have this apart, you want to take this little piece that's right here and move it gently to the side because you don't want to break that ribbon cable. Inside our little packet, we have a little spacer. And what this does is their old products used to lose connectivity every once in a while because the, connecting, the connections wouldn't connect. And this is a way for that to no longer happen. All right, we got the spacer back in. We got that put back. And now we can reattach our mount. So now that that's done, you can put the mount and the Allen wrench and the screws from the mount to the side and bring back your camera. That's the best way I want to do this here. Okay, so now you need to take the old filter out, which is just an IR cut filter. This OLPF also has an IR cut filter built in. And what an IR cut filter does is uh, Blackmagic used to have problems with infrared polluting the image. And now this filter helps out in that matter. So let's be extra careful here. Screw number one. Let's bring back in our tray. 
Crew numero dos. All right, well now we're gonna unscrew the last screw here. Sorry that the light was off for the other two. I just noticed that. All right, so now we take these handy dandy tweezers that they supplied for us. They're almost the perfect width to pick it up by those two screw holes, which is exactly what I'm going to do. So you just put them in the holes, sque squeeze in the middle, and voila, we are out. Here is the old one. Here's the back side of the old one. And the new one is much beefier. The tweezers have a much harder time picking it up because it's much it's much thicker than the old one for one and it's just an all around better built product. Make sure that's seated down into its correct position. Oh, which it is now I believe. Yeah, there we go. All right, now we screw in the old screws into the new filter. Screw number one. And these screws are very small, so try not to lose them. It's hard with these gloves. <laughs> screw number two is finally cooperated, and we can screw that bad boy in. Screw number three. And we have... We have our, oh, that looks like I've screwed it in sideways. I'm going to redo that little one there. These are very precise machines, obviously. So if you do something just a little bit off of what it wants to do, especially when it comes to optics, you're not gonna get the desired result. So you wanna make sure everything goes in flush and goes in the way that it's supposed to. Voila. Okay, the next thing. Next thing I'm going to do is, uh, just in case you get any dust in or anything in there, I'm going to uh, blast some air onto the filter itself. And let me see if I have any filter cleaners. Bit of moisture to get that off, so I sprayed this. I never sprayed the sensor. Just gives it a little bit of moisture. And now we can go in here and boom. Perfect. Spray it one more time with some air. Anyways, that's pretty good right there. So now I'm going to drop back on the EF sensor and we're going to screw it back in. All right, so the mount's back on. Give it one more spritz in here. So we have the old filter, which is always good to keep because it is an IR cut filter. And while it's not as good as the one we just put in there, it still is decent if something happens to the one you have here. Now this is uh, sold by a company called Raw Light, R-A-W-L-I-T. And it goes for about $400. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is hook up a battery, make sure all, everything works. And after that, we're good to go. So let me get a battery, lock it on the back here. And we'll flip the switch. I know there's no lens on it, but we should be able to tell whether or not this bad boy is working. Voila. Mmm, love that new camera smell with the fans turning and everything. If you're wondering what happened here, um, you'll have to watch my Ursa video uh, when I first show that I got a new camera. 
Uh, basically, a product that I bought um, had defective screws, and when I tightened it, both screws popped out. And this was my attempt to fix it, which did work, but looks like hell. And then I found out there's a better way to fix it, which you can find on Tom Antos's page. So if you ever pull one of these screw housings out, go to Tom Antos's page. Don't do what I did and super glue in the remains. It, it works, but it I, I have no faith in. It. Anyways, that's all. This, uh, that's all we're gonna do for today. Um, I'm not going to do my same spiel. Keep watching. Hope this helped, and I'll see you guys next time.